Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Barnhard. Hi, it's Ella over here. <laughs> We're here in All Writers Welcome, the ultimate writing group, to talk today about tips for writing inspiration. It's what we all want, right? We all want to just sit and like have the creativity flow through us at our fingertips and we're typing we're like whoa where's this coming from this is amazing <laughs> um and it's a it's a great place to be uh but there are ways you can get to it so that's what we want to talk about today and we'd love to have you join the conversation what do you do for writing inspiration how do you get inspired how do you get to that magical place where the lightning creativity is just shooting out of your fingertips <laughs> um yes so where should we start, Ella? Do you have the, the thoughts immediate come, immediately come to mind for you about getting inspired? Are there places you go or things you do? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously the first one is to is to practice, is to write every day, right? <laughs> so when you have a mindset, I think inspiration here, this is my overall thing. My first thought is inspiration starts with a mindset. Okay, that makes um, sense to me. So... Uh, so if you can get yourself into the mindset of inspiration, then that's going to make it a lot easier. So the first thing is to write every day because then your, your mind practices getting into the inspiration mindset. Like mm. it becomes a habit yeah, of getting into the inspiration mindset. So I, I think that's, yeah, I think that's probably backed up by science because we have these neural pathways, right? Our neurons mm -hmm. do what we train them to do. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, you know what a great way to experience that is, is with worrying or with negative thoughts. Like that's <laughs> a, a perfect example of how you train your brain. Because yes. if you have, um, like say your, your partner is late coming home from somewhere. If you are in the habit of going, oh my gosh, there's probably been a three car pile up on the side of the road. And, you know, I need to, like, it's, you could go from zero to 60 incredibly quickly because you've trained your brain now that's a training we want to avoid but it's, yes. i think it's a really clear way to see that you can train your brain you can make that neural pathway to get yourself there so cool what are what are some ways that you um practice like what would be a good way for somebody to start practicing that the positive neural training yeah well um i don't just you know, I don't know. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you sit down and start writing and eventually it'll keep going. <laughs> eventually you'll have so that's practice. a good point. That's a really good point that, that you're not going to expect the first time to be that magic. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. making that a point. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a point. First time doesn't happen like magic. But you yeah. just sit down and you do it anyways. There you go. So <laughs> do it anyway. Train yourself. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, and then once you've gotten um, like more of the uh, the feel of it, like, and you're working through it, and you're like, okay, this is this is how I sit down and start writing. Um, are there places you go in the world that really help you um, recapture? that like yeah. so now we're in the stage where we're, we're building the habit we're training our brains to go okay there's the time to write um but then we want to like up the game um yeah do you have yeah i think i think you know and then there's times you're not always inspired i think um i think getting out in nature can be really awesome way to get inspired for writing and um and what it the third the thing that comes up when you're out in nature is curiosity for me like curiosity mm. is something that comes up when i'm able to well there's a couple of things one when you take a walk in nature specifically a walk it gives your time your mind it's, it's almost like it wakes up a different part of your mind because yeah. you're you're physically moving it's and so there's kind of like this meditative like thing where your 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 analytical mind kind of softens and your you know creative mind can kind of wake up and and kind of reach out and especially if you can take a long walk because I remember why when, when I was in um, college I was so fortunate to be able to do a backpacking a, a you know two months backpacking as a class. Wow, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And and 
when I first started, you know, I was just like walking, you know, with the backpack and, uh, you know, just like my mind was still full of analytical things. But as the, as the everyday week, life, yeah, yeah all that, all yeah, that stuff is just life. kind of on a loop circulating. Yes. But as the weeks went by, I started to get like everything, the pace kind of slowed down and I was able to really look and see things that I had never noticed before. I was able to be curious about, I was like, oh, you're like, look at that. I was able to see like tiny, tiny flowers, Um, like on the path that I would have just walked over and never noticed before. And, and so I, and I think that's a good space for inspiration to have that curiosity and noticing things that you maybe don't always notice when you've got your analytical day-to-day busy mind going. Yeah. I think that's There are two like really key things for writing that I'm hearing in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. One is um, just noticing, right? And you want the 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 part of your brain that notices and also appreciates details to be in Mm -hmm. high gear for writing inspiration, because you don't want to sit down and your your scene is the girl walked through the forest. You're like, yeah, you know, what does the forest look like? I've got no idea. You so have turning on your detail radar is hugely important. But the second thing I'm hearing in what you're saying is that um, it's as if you're seeing things with fresh eyes. And if you're going to write compellingly any kind of writing, fiction or nonfiction, you have to be able to leave behind your own perspective and take on the perspective of a character or, you know, even when you're writing nonfiction, really put yourself in the place of your reader and think, what does this person need to know? Uh, you know, what What are the most important things I could say to draw the reader in and explain and inform? So for any kind of writing, I think being able to leave your own perspective behind uh, would be huge. And it sounds like you were you were doing that by means of leaving behind all the everyday worry loops and planning loops and even positive loops. But the yeah. loops, right, where you're yeah. just kind of like, oh, I'm excited. I'm going to do this today or this is happening. Um, yeah. Those are those are inward and you want the outward. Ooh, super cool. That sounds like an yeah. amazing trip. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. But, it, <laughs> but I, I do. And, and I kind of want to bring it back because it, it yeah. is. It's inspiration, again, in that mindset. And that's, I guess it's a way, you know, taking a walk in nature is a way to build those neuro pathways you know, almost tricking your brain. Cause sometimes it's hard to just sit down yeah. and get that, that those loops to turn off or go to the background. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes hard, but if you can go take a walk in yeah. nature, you can, you know, you practice building up those neural pathways so that then when you do need to sit down, you've already, you, you know, you can and right. have that which, inspiration which that- mindset. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but which also segues beautifully into um, one of the the tips that I'm sure any professional writer would give you, but that we may forget, which is always carry a notebook. Because oh. as you you know, as you're out there on that beautiful hike or or walk, you know, in that space, and something does come to mind, that inspiration does pop up. You want to be able to capture it, and mm-hmm. there's something um, really powerful and grounding about knowing you've captured the idea. I think a lot of writers and maybe people in general um, get anxious about losing great ideas. And I know you're a huge a huge fan of um, Google voice typing and I am too. And I have seen it help so many students. I work with some students who have auditory processing issues and they're brilliant and they come up with this sentence and then by the time they go to type it or write it, it is gone. And I think this happens to all people mm-hmm. to some extent, but the, I've seen it in really extreme cases because the the short-term audio memory, to get technical about it, is just like, it's not revving the right way. It's not up to snuff. And all the intelligence is there and all the brilliance and all the great writing ideas. And they just, you see them get get lost. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, turn on your Google voice typing right now, you know, and just talk yeah. it out. And that is a huge, huge saver. Um, but there's that anxiety of like, oh, I'm going to have great ideas and I'm going to lose them. Well, mm-hmm. don't lose them. Get that notebook. Notebook. Which then, which then of course means um, later 
when you're in that time that you're training yourself to write in, right? Mm -hmm. So this is now the time where I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm here. You're like, oh, what if I don't have inspiration? Guess what? I got this whole notebook of inspiration, (laughs) right? That's when you you call up, you dial back up the inspiration. So always have it, always Uh have it, always travel with a notebook. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't it be cool if you had, uh, wouldn't it be cool if you had on your phone, like an inspiration folder or something. So if you were, so when you're out and about, yeah, like on your Google keep or something, you had like a, like oh, what's folder. Google keep. I'm, I'm behind the times. Pretend, talk to me. Like, I don't know about technology. Okay, Google, Google keep, keep. <laughs> Google keep is, it looks like so I I write on mine, but Ooh, basically okay. you can you have like different things that you can save. You can take pictures and it just keeps it for later. You can make lists. Ooh. I have what art what your art means to the world, or even though I or you can oh. save websites so I have six foolproof steps to something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or if I if I'm out and I see a book that I want to buy or look up later, I like take a picture of it. And then I have I it, love it here. Anyways, what if you could have like a Google Keep just for your writing inspiration? So when you're out and about, you could you can do voice recording on Google yeah. Keep. You could do you could take pictures. You can, you know, you can write handwrite, or you could or you could type. You know, like your little wow. tiny fingers. And you could have like a whole folder of inspiration, or a whole app. Yeah. Of inspiration that you could then when you were sitting down, you're like, oh, you know, I'm not I'm not thinking of anything. Well, when you were out and you saw like when you were out and you were in New York and you saw Naked Cowboy, you could like go and find your picture. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Naked Cowboy. I'm totally inspired now. I, how would I ever forget about Naked Cowboy? That <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probable, but yeah, <laughs> uh, but, but especially for those things that may be small, and and I'm still just so drawn back to thinking of you on that backpacking trip because I'm I'm imagining that you would have um, had a lot of responses happening, like seeing something and it evokes something, like those flowers, you know, the what what did you notice about them? Like it was the way the purple caught the light, or you know, did it remind you of teeny tiny? Um, dancers or something like the yeah. not just what happened but how we felt about it and reacted to it is so key to capture and that sounds like a perfect way oh I love it okay I'm gonna I'm gonna download that as soon as or as soon yeah. as yeah yes go Google for giving us the tools oh my gosh oh my god <laughs> yeah and if you um, want inspiration on na- using nature as inspiration check out Henry David Thoreau <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Like he's like the father of using nature for inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> um. So and, and and you know that brings up another great point, which is uh, reading more to get inspired. You, I think you oh, can't yeah. expect to write if you're not reading. Um. And yep. I I actually remember really fondly. Um, being in, in high school and whenever I would write, it would just take on the style of whatever we were reading in class. You know, like, I, I just noticed about my own writing style. It's like, oh, this is lots of short sentences and, and interesting, mm-hmm. uh, situations. I was, I'm imitating Hemingway and I was, uh, yeah. imitating Salinger and it would just, just happen naturally, but it was so, um, it was kind of like being at a buffet of gourmet food where there were all these different options and ways to write spread out before me. And I go, I'm going to try a little bit of this and try a little bit of that and see what works. And I I feel strongly that that's something that helped me find my writing voice. Um, And because I I got to try things out. How does it feel to write in these kind Mm -hmm. of sentences or about those topics or with this type of dialogue or description? Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I think people should always be reading not only in the genre that they're they're writing in the genres, because we have a lot of people in this group who write in multiple genres, which is so cool, mm-hmm. um, which probably already helps you yeah. think about uh, your, your voice. Um, but t- to be reading great literature all of the time is, is one of the key responsibilities of a writer, I think. Um, yeah. 
and a great place for writing inspiration, like yeah. to get inspiration for writing. I, I was thinking about how art can be mm. like inspiration for writing. And, um, and my first thought was, you know, different books or different stories. It didn't necessarily have to be books because I was thinking about stories, how sometimes I like to watch not all the shows, but every now and again, there's a show <laughs> like on TV, which TV is, you know, TV is somebody's art. Television shows are somebody's art. That's true. You know, that's their creation. And so there's some shows that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just the way they've put this together is really brilliant. Yeah. And I'm like, woo, inspired. The other thing, though, is um, is I was thinking about how you can use art as like a writing prompt. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's what I was thinking. I, I thought that was the direction you were going in when you first said it. Yeah, like, yeah. Art, walk art walk through the museum, prompt. flip through your, yep. your book of great works. Yep. And then be like, Ooh, how did this person, what is this person's story or what yeah. is the situation? Yeah. I I think that's one of the, the most fun activities I've ever done with a, um, a writing workshop was to grab pictures off the web and yeah. ask what happened right before this moment. Right. Yes. What is this lady doing? She's, you know, she's like, what's her story? Oh my gosh. That's, I love that's Yeah. That's a fabulous um, writing prompt. Um, I love Matisse. What, what's the inner dialogue <laughs> there? What's the moment? Yeah. What's going on in her day? And yeah. just, and, and like walking in nature, what it does is wakes up your curiosity. It says, Hey, um, you get to, you get to fill in what's going on here and it could be anything you want. Um, but the wonderful thing about being inspired by a work of art or a, a TV show or another story is mm -hmm. it gives you some parameters to work with. And I think actually that's huge for inspiration um, mm -hmm. because we've mm -hmm. all experienced, you know, some people call it analysis paralysis or just the overwhelm that comes from knowing I could do anything. I could go in any direction. Mm -hmm. And um, where do I start? What's the what's the best possible, um, I idea. Uh, when I was growing up, we had a, a dog who was a, a mutt. He was a foundling, but he was part golden retriever and his retrieving instinct was really strong. And, um, my dad would, would take him and the other dog out on walks and they would always find tennis balls. And, um, when they would play on the walk and then the tennis balls would get confiscated because the dogs like to shove them under the couch and then dig up the couch trying to get them back out. So they all got <laughs> confiscated. And one day my dad said, I wonder what would happen if we just took all the tennis balls at once into the backyard and threw them in the air. You know, what would yeah. the dog do? Yeah. The dog, it turned out, could not pick up a single tennis ball because he would go to one and then he would go to the other. And you could almost see the wheels turning in his mind, telling him there might be something better there might be a better <laughs> option. And it was like, it's such a concrete, wonderful image for me because it mm. really represents, just pick up one. They're all tennis, but they're all great. They're all soggy mm. and disgusting and they smell like dog and you would love to chew on it. You know, is start yeah. anywhere. It's okay. And, and it like, it really puts me in mind of how powerful it is to have parameters for writing. And what yeah. happens with a writing prompt like that picture? Who's the artist? Who's that Matisse. artist, by the way? Matisse. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, having something to give you a structure and give you um, not even guidelines, yeah. but like containment. A place to start, like yeah. a, a focus. Yeah. Uh, I'm not seeing all the other tennis balls because I'm focused on this. Yes, blinders. <laughs> yeah, blinders. You're like, okay. Yeah. Well, and, and, and yes, like when you're sitting down to a blank page that is what it is like mm -hmm. it is a blank page is anything is possible you have yes. all of the possibilities and all the options of everything that anything could ever be written on this blank page <laughs> any right style of any in length any style, in yeah. any form it could be a poem or an essay or yeah right and so and so i love i love that you brought that up that it's tips for inspiration. You know, an inspiration tip for writing is to narrow your focus, like yeah. narrow your focus to just this one tennis ball. 
I mean, seriously. I mean, I yeah, yeah. Yep. And then so or like a writing prompt, like Matisse, my favorite yeah. author. Yeah, speak, so speaking <laughs> of writing prompts, we have had requests for them, and I, I am starting to um, uh, gather them and make them. Um, but just kind of as an aside, if there are particular mm-hmm. types of writing prompts, I've been the ones I've been creating so far are for narrative writers, things mm-hmm. that would be inspiring for for people writing stories. Um, but if there are particular types of writing prompts, and what I mean by that is. Um, for specific kinds of writing. If you're working on a particular project and you're like, I need a writing prompt for how do I write good dialogue between two characters? Or I don't know, how can I make mm-hmm. this section of my nonfiction book um, a little more organized? Uh, please put them in the, the comments so we can respond directly to those. But yeah, as a yeah, <laughs> as a side note. Also, an aside to your side, I, <laughs> I have always- If it's an aside to the side, does that bring us to the back or around the front? <laughs> no, never mind. Never mind. But yeah, yeah, I would, I, I like, uh, I also like photographic or picture yes. writing prompts. I really like yeah. those. Like when you yeah. find, when you see some awesome. kind of picture that you're like, Ooh, this stimulates my imagination is being stimulated right now. I love it so much. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, I, I think those speak to a lot of people too, because they have some containment, but they're not really constraining. I know some people get frustrated with writing prompts. And sometimes I get that question, you know, I'll put the writing prompt out to a class and they go, well, can I change it? You go, yes, yes, absolutely. Right. You know, if you yeah. have an instinct about something to do with this, that's the whole point. But there's that feeling of, well, I want to use those exact words. Oh, that's okay. Go for it. You know, yeah. it spoke to some part of your brain and you're ready to run with it. So yeah. I think um, images are super helpful for that. Yeah, I love that. Um, the um, idea of walking in nature made me think of something else that I know you're um, really big on, and um, that's gratitude and gratitude journaling. And I'm wondering if you've ever used uh, taking a moment of gratitude as a way to like re-inspire yourself for writing, to get that inspiration back. Is that something that works for you? Yeah, I um I like again and this like harkens back to the initial part that we were talking about is writing an inspiration as a mindset. Yeah. You know, so so day to day, you know, in your life, you're not sitting in inspire you're not, you know, inspiration is not your go is like it's not like your constant mindset. Right. right. Like, that's, oh, I'm that's, doing, that's I'm doing this thing. now. This is not inspiration. This is getting stuff done. You know, you're yeah. in the getting stuff done. Like often in the day I'm in the getting stuff done mindset or yeah. I'm in the, you know, how do I make this work mindset or right. like, so inspiration isn't a constant mindset. And, um, and so when you sit down, it's like a shift to open up inspiration. And I, I think a really powerful way to kind of trigger that is gratitude because gratitude isn't usually a lot of people's go to regular mindset. It's, you know, we're usually like, okay, what is, what's working here? What's not working here? How can we make things work? Like it's, you you know, or whatever your mindset is like, it's usually gratitude is not a go to mindset. And yeah, so I use I'm gratitude. Yeah. Right. So gratitude. So when you need inspiration, um, just a minute, honey, he's in the bathroom. <laughs> we have a cat. That's, that's a name. great writing prompt. <laughs> honey, he's in the bathroom. I love it. Prompt. We have a cat who knows that we're recording live. <laughs> and <laughs> he has like the loudest meow. And what he does is he goes into talk about nature for inspiration. Your pets are nature. Okay. <laughs> so he goes into the bathroom because he has this really like, you know, so some people have like those voices that just penetrate like walls. You're like, I can always hear that person yeah. no matter you where they're at. Dress your cat. Yeah. So he's like that, but he knows that the bathroom and specifically the bathtub echoes. <laughs> Like it like amplifies the meow. And so he if, if he if he's out here and you have not paid attention to he's like meow meow and you're like ignoring him because you're doing a Facebook live, then, then he will go into the bathroom 
where it's amplified and go, meow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so an artist who wants to be heard. <laughs> so my very supportive husband is like, where is he? Where is he? Oh, no. He's in the bathroom. Get to your... Meow. He's in his anyway. theater. He's in the opera theater. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so there's a little writing prompt. <laughs> oh, I love it. Or an amusing story. But yeah, That's... we're talking about gratitude. So using gratitude as well, a mindset I... shift. So you're I like, can you see. Be grateful I... about. I can really relate to um, when I'm in gratitude, I'm also mm -hmm. in, I don't know if I would call it curiosity, but I'm, I'm also in that state, which is the same state I get to in nature, which is looking and absorbing. Mm -hmm. And my internal thoughts are tuned down a little bit because what I'm doing is taking in the world. When mm -hmm. I'm in the state of gratitude, like if I... Um, go for a walk, if I meditate, if I do something to put myself in my uh, kind of higher state of, mm -hmm. of thinking and being, um, I then I just look around the world and I almost feel like a newborn or an alien who's just landed. I'm going, oh, look at all of this wonderful opportunity there is. And things like all of a sudden, my computer is like, oh, I'm so fortunate and lucky to have this amazing yeah. machine that lets me talk to people thousands of miles away or, you know, and the internet and my favorite yeah. writing pen. And all of a sudden old things become new. So mm. I see that definitely as a, um, a similarity between going out in nature and, and doing whatever it is you do in your particular practice to get mm -hmm. into a gratitude state of mind. Cause they're both about wonder. Yeah. About mm. wonder. What? Yeah. Ah, oh, I love that. Fantastic world. Mhm. Mm yeah. Well, and 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 turning off those loops or putting them to the back or bringing something else forward. It's 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 you can use gratitude as your transition. Oh, yes. To you know, it's like okay, you can trigger the inspiration because maybe you're not going to write about what you're grateful for, but it's an amazing way to move those loops, those constant loops yes. of, uh, mm -hmm. and move them to the back and bring something else forward and then be like, okay, now that I'm in this place of wonder, yeah, let's you write. go into the, <laughs> the inspiration zone. Ooh, I love that. Moving into the inspiration zone via wonder, which then opens up so many um, ways to get inspired because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the question to ask yourself, writer, is what makes me feel that childlike wonder? Mm. Is there a place I go to? Is there somebody I talk to? Is there a certain kind of art that I look at? Um, being around children often can help create that oh, sense of yes. wonder. Go spend time with a um, yes. a young person, right? And and look through their eyes. Like take take a, a child to the zoo and or or on a nature walk and just watch all those notice those observations made for the first time and you you'll get back to that state of wonder yourself I think so. yes yeah and you know what's cool yeah. about that is we have a lot of moms as you pointed out we have a lot of moms in the group and a lot of people who are doing life and doing writing and going mm -hmm. sheesh this is a hard balance and yeah. and what if you could reframe and like time you spent with your kids taking them to a favorite spot that you guys like to go to you could think about as part of your writing inspiration research time and have your phone there with yes. your, what's it called? Say the name of the Google app again, Google, Google Keeps? Google Keep. Yep. Okay. Google Keep, right? Have that ready yep. and available. And, and as you're engaging with your kids and watching them enjoy and do all the cool stuff, just really quickly be, you know, typing or, or, or talking notes to yourself. And mm -hmm. wouldn't that be so cool if what you were doing to enjoy your family and to do all the life stuff that we all have to do could yeah. also be feeding your writing inspiration. Oh my gosh. Yes. That would be the best Ooh. ever. Ooh. Boom. <laughs> awesome wow oh i'm yeah. so inspired i i want to just go out and <laughs> yeah let's go <laughs> and write some more you know i have to say in my own writing practice lately i've been paying attention to that voice that's like oh i've got an idea because i'm i'm revising a story right now mm -hmm. and so I'm, i do that that i can do like in small chunks of time that works well for me and and um yesterday i was working on a work project and i was kind of stalled 
and a little voice was like, but I've got an idea for revising. And okay, let's listen to that and, and open it up mm -hmm. and work some on it. So also when you get that message, hey, I'm inspired right now. Um, if at all possible, you know, get, get it and, and do some work on writing or just take the notes for it, you know, take, mm -hmm. take the, the notes that get you mm -hmm. to save those ideas. But yeah, sometimes it comes up unbidden. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is it. Get it down right now. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. But to make it easy yeah. to do that. Oh my goodness. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I'm so inspired. I hope you guys are inspired. Oh, I just want to yeah. go on a nature walk now. <laughs> go on a nature walk. Bring our phone. Start taking your things. <laughs> Find That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download Google Keep. Okay. It's a good awesome. one. Awesome. Well, if anybody um, wants to put in their two cents again about writing prompts, Ella is saying she loves to have visual writing prompts. Um, yeah. And that's what we're going to be getting some, some more writing prompts into the group. So let us know what kind would be useful to you. And that's it for now. Ciao for now. Yeah. Ciao for now. All right. <laughs> have a great day. Bye. 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 <laughs>